On the southern tip of San Juan Island, you might witness a deer grazing on the tall grass. It is quite stunning, for sure. A bald eagle. Whoa! Stealing lunch from a seal. Or a fox on the hunt. But unless you're with Amy Lambert, you'll probably overlook the little white butterfly that has everyone talking. There's one. You see it? This one really likes the wind. Oh, there's two. Whoo, boy. When the butterfly is resting, you know you're seeing your island marble. The island marble is considered one of the rarest butterflies in North America. It only exists here, in the upper reaches of Washington State's Puget Sound, inside a small section of a very small national park. The island marble was thought to be extinct until it was rediscovered here in the late 90s. This is a butterfly that came up from nowhere. It's, it's curious, it's mysterious. So Lambert became one of the first scientists to study it, documenting its flight patterns, where it lays eggs, what kind of food it needs to survive. It was a pretty special time. The population and the, and the number of adults on the landscape, it, it was very abundant, and they were flying and dispersing in many areas. Including beaches like this one, where she discovered the healthiest colony of island marble butterflies. There was a lot of pepper grass, and there were many eggs. Then, in 2008, Lambert returned for her annual survey. And just as she was getting to know the island's rhythms, not a single butterfly returned to greet her. Pretty unusual. She looked for butterfly eggs, too, usually found on the buds of this native plant. Aha, uh -huh. no? What's that? But her search came up empty. I don't see anything. I'm disappointed. The numbers completely blinked out. She noticed that sand and gravel were blanketing the plants. It was a telltale sign that surging tides had rushed over the lagoon the previous winter, the kind of coastal flood that's expected to become more common over the next century. With so few strongholds left, any loss of habitat brings them one step closer to extinction. You realize your numbers are so low that uh, in your lifetime, maybe even in the next year, you may not see that, that those butterflies again. The island marble butterfly is on life support. Come on. Park researchers are helping the butterflies by raising them during their most vulnerable life stages. The park has been engaged in trying to be really supportive and help bring back the stability of the island marble butterfly population. It's a matter of the staff and the researchers collecting the eggs, bringing them back into the rearing lab, and ensuring that as the caterpillars progress in their life cycle, they have the nutrients that they need. It's just kind of tracking like so, like what stage they're in and what location on the plant they are, um, the status and anything notable about if they've fallen off or having any trouble. There's a lot of tending to their needs. Eventually the caterpillars wrap themselves in a cocoon, spend 11 months in a temperature controlled closet, and re-emerge as butterflies the following spring. We are helping release them into the habitat that we're really hopeful is the kind of habitat that they need. There's a butterfly right there. Did you see? It? Oh, there it is. It's coming back around. Lambert is hoping to entice the butterflies to move to higher ground. There's one here too. Wait, what? Yeah, look. By planting flowering grasses like these in the park's yeah. upland prairies and watching over the butterfly eggs. I track each one of those eggs as it moves through its uh, caterpillar stages to see if it, what the survival rate is, and in fact, if it's working or not. It's one thing to, to put all these adults out on the landscape, but you have to measure, are, are they surviving? It's not moving much, is it? Uh, chances of survival are pretty low. When they're this small, they usually uh, can only feed on the flowers or the buds. So it was stranded, and it likely starved. The timing is tricky. The plants must begin to bloom just as the butterflies are released. In conservation, when you're the one that's, you know, changing the temperature gauge in a captive rearing room, or you're the one that's putting seeds of these plants on the landscape, you realize how difficult it is. And questions remain about whether this upland habitat is enough. The island marble seems to like this prairie, but so do other creatures. 
Park Superintendent Alexis Friedi worries the prairie is getting crowded. So it's this never-ending cycle with the rabbits and they continue to expand. There's no way to keep the deer out of the park. You can't fence off the whole prairie for a single species. You know, everybody needs a piece of this place. So you're constantly having to decide which way, you know, to shift the balance of favor. Conservationists will continue to wrestle with that question, deciding whether a butterfly that has existed here for centuries has a place in its future. This KCTS9 Digital Studios original made possible with your support. Thank you.